Geon Corporation is a successful software company located in the Silicon Valley area of Northern California. Geon was created in 1988 by Burke Franklin, an entrepreneur who saw the need for effective, time-saving software templates. One of its early products was the award-winning BizPlan Builder, for which sales have now exceeded 300,000 copies. Today, Geon is recognized as a leader in providing useful software for emerging and established businesses. The software industry environment is fast moving, volatile, and often stressful. The, the stress sometimes comes in which opportunities do we take advantage of, which ones do we pursue, which ones do we say no to. And when you're a small entrepreneurial company, it's very difficult to say no to any opportunity that you see. Most of the conflict happens um, because a possibility impacts somebody's workload. Here's a great idea, let's do this. And what do you mean, let's do this? I can't even do what, what, I was do what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, how can I possibly do this? And so the, the dynamic was kind of one of resistance. There's so much to do, and not enough people to do it, and not enough money for it, and all those things. And so the conflict arises out of that. And I would say also that regardless of what business you're in, you could look at some things as problems. I could look at all these things as problems, too. And I look at them all as opportunities, either as an opportunity to learn something, fill in a gap in our operation that needs to be fixed anyway, or some kind of deal that could further the business. Executives and professional staff at GM must work together effectively to meet the demands of the volatile software industry. In this stressful environment, some interpersonal conflict would appear to be unavoidable. Is conflict among GEON staff members negative or positive? I think conflict uh, is almost desirable or, or a, a good thing that you need every once in a while because it shows that people aren't holding back their thoughts and ideas. If they're putting things out on the table and being free with putting things on the table, sure, some things are not going to match up and uh, there's going to be conflict. Because you want people who know their business. I need my sales guy to say, hey, you know, I've got customers who want to buy this and this is what they want. I've got a product manager who says, hey, this is the stuff we can make. There's going to be a conflict in there somewhere, you know. The idea is that conflict is neither good nor bad. It is just reality. It's the differences of opinion. And out of that, you can come up with better solutions. So if they're uncomfortable in a conflict, you're going to grow as a result of the conflict. You're going to expand your repertoire for dealing with people. And you're going to, your security comes from knowing you have the ability to deal with conflict. And, and you're secure in yourself and knowing that you could sit down with somebody and shoot it straight with them. Secure in knowing that you have credibility uh, in doing what you say you're going to do. And so you can resolve conflict. Geon executives realized that conflict should not be eliminated, but that it could be managed and controlled to benefit the company. How might Geon manage conflict? Geon executives addressed the issue of conflict directly. They developed some corporate philosophies and strategies to manage conflict and facilitate cooperation. The core practices are more day-to-day, -day. how do you do business with each other internally and externally with outside people. The ones that come to my mind right now are straight speaking. Don't talk around an issue. Talk to the heart of the issue. The sh I think the shift we've made is to communicate, you know, this really makes me nervous, Burke, when you come up with this brilliant idea and I have these 27 other things I'm supposed to be doing. You know, let's talk about that. The withholding just doesn't work. I mean, the withholding keeps you from being able to make decisions, it stops the action, it, it robs you of your velocity. I mean, there's, you just have to put it out there. You have to express what you're feeling on any decision and on any conflict. Listen totally to what that person's trying to say. Don't be prejudging them while they're saying something. Don't be planning your response before they've talked. Simply let the person finish what they said yeah, you, maybe you know exactly where they're going to go. Yeah, you know what they're going to say. I'm sure you're formulating your answer along the way. But be, have, have the decency to let them finish what they're saying so they know that you heard what they said. 
And in fact, we might even request that somebody else give us some generous listening for a few minutes. Uh, that allows uh, brainstorming on the fly, you know, right in the middle of a meeting. We say, okay, let's, let's just have two minutes of generous listening right now to this idea. And uh, it allows people not to get all hung up on who's right and who's wrong. Then there's the idea of honoring agreements. Just as we, it's important to, for a company to honor its agreements uh, with outside vendors and outside customers, well, we, do, we try to set up that same scenario internally, that we, we create agreements with each other. And we try to formalize these agreements, not necessarily in a written document, but uh, have both sides verbalize what they're agreeing to out of a meeting, and then you are going to live up to that agreement. Part of maintaining your credibility is, you know, something comes up, things happen all the time. Maybe a better opportunity comes along. You need to, you, well, I need to do this thing. You call a person up or you get a hold of them and say, hey, look, I told you I was going to get this thing done by Friday. Can't do it. If you cannot, as soon as you know you cannot live up to your agreement for, for whatever reason, it's your responsibility to contact the person who you have that agreement with and then negotiate, if possible, make a counter proposal. And the person you go back to has the, has the rights to either demand the original thing be done or make concessions. The, the whole process of making requests has worked very well for us. This means a formal request. Uh, a lot of times in meetings, people talk about issues or around issues. You, you can't have a meeting where it's just a bunch of discussions. Meetings are where decisions need to be made. And so between us, there's always someone who says, is there a request in there? So if someone says, wouldn't it be cool if we had a you know, demo of our of Biz Plan Builder Interactive we could send out to the resellers? Is there a request? Yeah. What, let's, let's make a demo. Who's going to do it? Sid will make the demo. Okay, we've got a decision. We're going to do a demo. We're going to have Sid at least look at the feasibility of doing the demo, which now we're doing. But it forwards the action. It makes sure that the request is, I'm going to request something of you. I'm clear about what I'm asking for. You're clear about what you're being asked to do. And uh, you can accept it as requested. You can just decline it and say, hey, you know, sorry, I can't do that at all. Or I can do that, but can I, you know, you kind of come back with a, with a, um, a counter offer. How might GM learn and implement effective conflict management techniques? Gian used an outside consultant to assist senior managers in developing conflict management strategies. Creating the list of core practices was an important step toward managing conflict. During the last year, we've had regular off-site sessions that revisit these items regularly, and we've refined these core practices and core values over time. Then the next step is to take it all the way throughout the organization at GEON. And we've created a, an in-house mentorship program where each of the senior managers works with two or three other individuals to make sure that these core values and core practices are really understood and really believed in. It seems to have worked. The whole company seems to be moving in that direction. Uh, we're not by no means experts in these practices, but again, that's why you call it practices, is you practice them. It's not, you don't master them. <laughs> You're always in the process of, of learning it a little bit better, and each situation might call for a different core practice to be used. By recognizing that some conflict is inherent in their industry and company, Gian has developed strategies which enable their highly skilled and motivated professionals to manage conflict and work together in a collaborative corporate environment.